so this is a fun way to start out 2017. If you follow my Twitter, you know that I was in the hospital for a while. And many of you know that it may or may not have been a mental hospital. Spoiler, it was. That's why I'm making this video. So this video is just going to tell you guys what it's like to be in a mental hospital because I think it's glorified and I didn't know what to expect. Hopefully you don't ever have to go to one, but knowledge is power. So basically I was a 5150. So that means I was on a involuntary 72 hour hold within the facility. The facility that I was staying in, I'm not going to mention, but eh. I mean, I don't expect to have any more experiences within mental hospitals. I don't have anything to compare this one to, but this is how this particular one was ran. So I was taken from my hometown to this other facility because my hometown does not have a psych ward within their hospital. So I was taken to a hospital 40 minutes away. I had to be wheeled in on a gurney, which so extra, so extra, didn't need to do that. Could have walked, but that's beside the point. I get it, policies or whatever. Then I was greeted by the not nurses, nurses, mental health workers. They took my clothes which at the time was just a hospital robe because the previous hospital already took my clothes. They took my clothes, examined them, made sure there was nothing sharp or anything on them. They said, you can't wear this because it's indecent and it was a dress and tights. And they wouldn't let me wear my shoes because they had strings on them. So I was stuck in a hospital robe until someone could bring me clothes to wear. And what they did was they had me unrobe completely nude and just look over my body real fast to make sure I didn't have any cut scars or like damage to my body. So that was weird and super uncomfortable for me. Once I was over, I they asked if I would like to take a shower. They had shampoo and body wash. They had toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, lotion. That's what we want to call it. And they gave me a towel, a fresh robe, and these like cotton underwear, which I was like, no, it's fine. I changed before I went to the hospital yesterday. I don't want those. <laughs> Took a shower, which the shower did never get hot, to flooded. So that's great. And I learned afterwards, because I immediately went and laid down in my room and just kind of napped because I didn't know what else to do because nobody came to talk to me. Not a nurse, not the psychiatrist, not a doctor, nobody, nobody. For six hours, nobody talked to me. It was just, and then at that point it was just like, hey, it's, um, I don't even know what it was called, like group time, but like it was to explain what goes on in the hospital and you had to listen to it every day, but Nobody talked to me. So I was like, hey, where's the doctor? Kind of would like to speak to him because I would like to leave when my 72 hours are up. And they said to me, you missed him when you were in the shower. He was looking for you, but you were in the shower, so he left. Homeboy couldn't wait like five, ten minutes for a patient who has just taken 40 minutes in an ambulance and spent all night in an ER to get out of a shower to talk to them. So I had to wait until the next day. But the next day came, I didn't get up for breakfast because you have to go to bed at 9 p.m. and you have to get up at like seven something for breakfast. I'm not about that ever. I'm not a breakfast person. I'm not a morning person. I don't like the idea of eating really early in the morning. I just don't, <laughs> it upsets my stomach. So I missed breakfast, didn't go to the first group activity time because it was at like 8 something. And the doctor came in eventually at like 9 a.m. He said, you know, what happened, which I am not going to say in a video. I told him, I told him what medication I was on and that was about it. The same information I had been telling everybody previous to him and he was like, okay, and then left. Two minutes, tops. 
what how are you how are you a practicing psychiatrist when you don't even talk to your patients but okay i digress whatever then there's lunch and lunch let me tell you not great it was some fish or that's what they told us nothing has salt nothing has caffeine in it is there sugar in anything probably not so that day i went through a olivia eats poorly detox where i got a caffeine headache i sugar dropped like it just everything at once and there's like four group times where you get to color and you get to watch TV and talk about your feelings. But nobody talks about their feelings really. We just kind of color in silence and watch TV. And there's snacks. Snacks consisted of granola bars that I couldn't eat because I'm allergic to peanuts and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that I couldn't eat because I'm allergic to peanuts which is the thing I told them. I said explicitly, I am so allergic that I cannot be in the same room as someone eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I go into anaphylactic shock and they, okay, they put it on my little dietary thing, cool. Still didn't get anything. I had like graham crackers most of the time because couldn't really eat anything. Also said, hey, lactose intolerant, super lactose intolerant. I will vomit all over you if I have dairy. And they just gave us milk. And I was like, uh, food was super bland. We had chicken at one point and it was um, beige. You know those memes where it's like white people can't put spices on anything? That's literally hospital food. Disgusting. And also very, very dry. And all I had was water and non-caffeinated tea and decaf coffee basically don't want to go back there the beds were nice like memory foam but uh the blankets are thin so are the pillows and you can't do anything like the phone is in a hallway on a payphone you can't have pencils or crayons or pens in your room for obvious reasons and only like non uh, paperback books which makes sense but like yeah that's about it and then you're limited to what you can watch on tv because you have to share with like 10 other people so it was really boring but it was really good because i got to think about things a lot and uh, figure out my life and what led me there and now I am on the road to fixing it so I mean I don't recommend you just hitting rock bottom and having to go to a mental hospital to figure out your life but if you can just like take like an hour each day maybe and write down like your goals for that day and your goals for tomorrow and your, how you're going to accomplish those goals and because that was a thing they made us do was write down our daily goal and what steps we were going to take to do them and how we were feeling that day and i think that was real good for a lot of people so that's something i suggest is just writing how you feel in the morning writing a goal for that day steps you're going to take to reach that goal and then at night say again how you feel did you reach your goal why or why not if not you know what steps we can you take to do it tomorrow maybe that's my experience and i don't want to go back i don't ever have plans to go back and it uh i think prison would have been better so today you're going to meet my beautiful mother so there's a tag on the internet called the meet my mom tag and i know one of the questions